there are two very different approaches to manufacturing computer parts and servers in Asia's sprawling mega factories. There's the neurotically clean, obsessively sterile style of assembly, and then the more traditional approach to manufacturing. This is a computer case factory, and it's kind of loud. The cases you buy are made in places just like this. Grungy, dirty, and oily, this factory is Inwin's oldest. There's character in these machines, and the cold-blooded efficiency gained from handmade customizations is what earned Inwin the industry position and the money to make its clean, new facility that we see later in this video. In this special series, we tour around Taiwan to look at some of the most important factories to the computer industry, giving you an exclusive, close access look at how PC parts are really made. We'll be learning about how computer cases are made, showing the oily conveyor belts of fan bearing factories, and studying some of the most advanced RAM automation facilities around. These videos will get posted every Saturday for the next month, so check back regularly to see everything ranging from the pristine factories to the harsher realities of manufacturing. And we won't be shielding you from what factory life can really be like. Hit the notification icon to get each tour posted in this educational series. But now, let's get started with neighboring factories where cases and servers are getting hand assembled, packaged, and loaded into trucks for delivery. Our series starts in the heart of Taoyuan, Taiwan. This video is brought to you by you and purchases on store.gamersnexus.net. These travel documentaries are some of our most educational but expensive content, and purchases of our brand new GN15 fully custom mouse mat are funding our factory tour series. The special blue and yellow GN15 mouse mat features a scattered PC component design showing blower and axial GPUs, fans, keyboard, CPUs, and small devices. It's wide enough to accommodate your mouse and your keyboard, and the underside uses a custom, vibrant yellow rubber that's hard to get, color match to the top design and giving a unique flair to the mouse mat. The border is made of bright blue stitching for added endurance against frayn and for some visual pop. Grab the GN15 mouse mat on store.gamersnexus.net in both the standard variant or get a special autographed version. This is the best way to support our series, so thank you for your support, and let's get started. The chaotic, ruthless efficiency of the old and the painstaking cleanliness of the new. It's a classic story that well encapsulates Taiwan, where these in-wind factories are located, from a hectic, anything-for-the-job grit to technological precision. Today, we're showing you Inwin's clean server and system factory, where hundreds of people work to bring the product from the metal stamping down the street to the server assembly stations. But there's only one problem. They wouldn't let us walk in in just any clothes. So we had to dress up like this. But they didn't have a hat that fit my head. Fortunately, they were too embarrassed to say no at that point, so we got to go in anyway. And the smiling like nerds is an optional part of the uniform. Let's tour Inwen's Zhangxin factory. This is a server delivered freshly assembled on an anti-static platter. These servers are built in a brand new factory for big clients we can't name, but there might be hints later in the video. Your web traffic has probably ended up on many of these servers. Each server is not only built here, but it's tested here too, and the testing process sounds like a jet in. We start our tour in the assembly line, which just by the price of CPUs and RAM alone is probably one of the most expensive areas per square foot in Taiwan. Technicians take trays filled with terabytes of RAM and multiple Epic or Xeon CPUs and head to the conveyor workstation. 
From here, they check each build order on the screen and start assembling the actual components of the server by hand. The cases are made down the way by another Inwin factory that we'll talk about later, and actually we've covered in the past. There's six complete assembly lines per floor at any given time for this process. Each features its own SOP for the customer orders. Per day, this factory can burn through about 80 servers per line, maxing out at around 480 servers for this floor alone. A different line is configured for two use systems due to changes in the size in the process, and for full configurations with maximized RAM, an assembly line crew might socket upwards of a thousand sticks per day. For betting the job application asks, how strong your thumbs are. As the systems are built, they're automatically carried down the conveyor belt and moved station to station. Eventually, the server is brought into a server elevator and brought out of sight. But here at GN, we're still developing object permanence, so we asked the Inwin crew to prove that the server still existed once it went up the elevator. They told us we'd have to figure out a way. And sometimes, that means we break the rules to get the shot. After causing a huge scene and getting the attention of the factory floor managers who probably don't want a headline about a factory accident involving a YouTuber, and after I ensured there was absolutely no evidence of our dangerous hijinks, we finally were ready to be greeted with our hard-earned shot of a server coming across the belt. How that works. Good enough, let's move to the testing part of the factory. After the machines progress through this conveyor maze assembly line, they make their way over to this ginormous, high power testing room. Up to 800 one new servers get burned in just in this room alone. As for its power capabilities, the room is equipped with 80 total test lines, each capable of delivering 5,000 watts. The total power handling capacity of the testing floor for this part of the factory is a staggering 400 kilowatts. There are all kinds of special cooling and air handling units to make this all possible too, and it's spread over the entire part of the floor. Total burn-in time is two hours per server at 10 units per rack, and one guy is able to control almost all of it. Meet the man with the most powerful index finger in the world, trained from entering BIOS hundreds of times per day. The test racks in this area cycle through I.O. testing to make sure all the ports fire, CPUs burned in, the coolers burned in, and even testing the entire RPM range for the fan. And it sounds kind of like an aircraft carrier when they all fire at once, so prepare your ears. And, uh, no. OSHA doesn't exist here. That's also why I was allowed to climb the pallet stacker earlier. The testing suite is largely developed by the factory itself, with software designed to alert technicians to bad components or test failures. Anything that fails goes to the repair station, where technicians will identify the bad part and rescue the rest of the server. Some bad components, like sticks of RAM, can be sent in for board level repair by the original supplier, especially since many of these factories are local to Taiwan, making it logistically easy. In a side room, there's additional testing for low volume custom builds. I was briefly assigned a very important job. They said something about not being possible to screw up or something like that. I had to move the monitors up and down with a button. Unfortunately, I didn't get to keep that job, probably because it would be demoralizing for other people to see how good I was at pushing that button, 
but you can see that it actuates the monitors and the peripherals. These stations are also used for documentation and photography to keep a record of serial numbers and parts. After all this, the servers are loaded onto pallets when testing is complete and then prepped to move to packaging. But there's one more secret room before we go to packaging, and it's this one. This brand new facility is for water cooling testing on servers. The huge amounts of perfectly installed plumbing, all lined up cleanly on the ceiling of this room, allows for up to 38U or 20 kilowatts of servers to be tested at once, whichever comes first. The water pumps through these huge hoses with pressure gauges placed throughout to help check for leaks. They're also checking for water temperature here. This can be configured to test water cooling for entire server racks, or multiple even, for companies that want to build a server farm, or they can test a single unit at a special station. All the water is pumped to a giant radiator on the roof, and yes, we did ask, and they said no, we can't see it this time. Is the radiator? Yeah. Is the radiator no, it's not visible? No. <laughs> I just had the same oh, yeah. But because they don't need to worry about the dexterity of a drone climbing a ladder, we were able to get some shots anyway. And it, it looks exactly like what they told us it looks like. Now we go to a whole other beast on its own, the packaging station. Pallets upon pallets of servers are unloaded onto conveyor belts. Technicians screw all the panels together for the server and perform final quality checks and inspection for all components. The team manually packs the servers into foam and boxes after doing these final steps, and despite being maybe one of the least sophisticated machines in the factory, the automation around a roll of tape is surprisingly satisfying. Each box gets auto-taped, rotated, and then auto-taped again. And although we couldn't name any of the clients earlier, there might be a something in the shot to suggest who some of them are, but we're not sure. As impressive and interesting as this factory is to see, it's just one of the factories we're looking at today. A quick car ride away, just down the street, is Inwin's longest standing, as they call it, traditional factory. And now, we're back here. We told you we'd keep it real about the truth of factory life, and this particular factory underscores some of those realities. These floors are kept dark to help combat the heat and the humidity of Taiwan, combined with the heat of ovens baking cases at nearly 200 degrees Celsius. In this old factory, cases are automatically moved along a ceiling-mounted conveyor line using hooks. One by one, the cases climb to get painted and then baked. The walkways are crowded with machines and massive equipment. Clearly, this was grown into. The claustrophobic wouldn't do well here, as I learned, nor would the misophonic. It's a noisy environment with the smell of paint everywhere and the musical tones of lunchtime. <laughs> offer a stark contrast to the ever-present sound of the paint waterfalls surrounding this area. On the scale of factories we've been to, the presence of at least respirators is better, sadly, than we've seen in some others. But it's certainly not conditions that we know many of you would be used to in the modern West. This is, however, a reality of manufacturing in the world. Between the noise and the air of many of the non-robotic painting factories we've been to, Floor managers at various companies have told us that it's been hard to keep staff around for very long, especially with the rise of the service industry. Robots have been slowly filling in the gaps for this former manual workforce, as we showed in our previous automated painting factory tour that Lee and Lee uses. Maybe in instances like these, though, robots are for the best. As for the factory work, the workers prep the cases and paint them as they're carried from one paint booth to another. The hooks are mounted in a way to minimize obstructions to the paint, and workers manually mask some parts of the cases. They're brought in at a fixed pace through the entire painting process. Later in the process, more automation is introduced for the generalized coating. 
whereas the earlier parts focus on hard to hit spots. These waterfalls help wash the overspray down into a catch basin mixed with paint and water, amounting to millions upon millions of liters of use annually. The factory is able to recapture and reclaim much of that water and squeeze the paint out of it. It's another thing we showed in that prior Lee and Lee painting factory tour if you're curious how that works. The point is to reduce usage as much as possible. Pipes are exposed outside of these buildings in Taiwan that allow the Taiwanese government to perform unannounced audits of the filtration quality as well. The entire process for painting each case takes about 40 minutes, and the baking process starts first at 75 degrees Celsius to slowly harden the shell, then it ramps to 180 degrees, and finally 200 degrees for powder coating. Inwin is slowly modernizing all of its factories to be more like its new server facility, and many other factories in Asia that we've seen have also been moving increasingly to robotics. We've encountered this more and more over the years in our factory tour series, and although the grit of a machine shop and tooling factory will be blended with the stale precision of robots over time, the frenetic pace of these factories will never go away. In our time at these manufacturing facilities, we saw constant movement and an unspoken understanding between everyone working of who needed to be where and when. There's an art to staying out of the way but still being productive here, and we were constantly in the way. It's normally what film crews do, so sorry. To see the differences though between the quiet and collaborative design room is filled with inspirational artwork, bright colors, and art books packed with future case designs, and the factories in which they're all made is a privilege of ours to share with you, and we're excited to continue reporting on what's behind the products you buy in the PC industry. If you want to learn more about the front end of product design prior to manufacturing, we have a tour of Inwin's design room linked in the video description, and we also have a full playlist of dozens of factories to check out. After all these steps, the products finally get packaged outside and shipped in the millions to PC builders and data centers around the world. In our next tours, we'll be looking at RAM programming and automation, memory manufacturing and SMT lines, bearing manufacturing for fans, and lasers. So be sure to subscribe. Also be sure to tell YouTube that you want all of our notifications to make sure you're told about these. Check back regularly. We're thrilled to bring you more unfiltered looks at this world of manufacturing PC parts, so please grab something on store.gamersnexus.net if you'd like to help fund our next trip to factories. Thanks for watching as always, and we'll see you all next time.